Hello students, this is Taranam Jahan and I'm here again with you all people to start up the new chapter from your geography. So let's begin the new chapter from your geography. So this is the chapter 5 of your geography by a name Natural Vegetation and Wildlife for the class 9 and the book we are following is NCRT. So let's start with the introduction of natural vegetation and wildlife. India stands in the 12th position in the country in Megha biodiversity and it is on the 10th position in the world having 47,000 species and the 4th position in Asia by having 45,000 flowering plants that is 6% of the total number of flowering plants are there in India and 90,000 species of animal as well as the fish in marine water. Now let's see what is natural vegetation. Natural vegetation refers to the plants which grows naturally without any human need. And if it is left undisturbed by the humans for a long time is called as virgin vegetation. Now what is flora? Flora is used to denote flower plants of a particular region. And what is fauna? It is used to denote animals of particular region. Or we can say that flora is equal to all the flowers, plants, uh, like uh, natural vegetation plus the crops is equal to flora. And if you want to say that what is fauna, then you can say the wildlife plus pets is equal to fauna. So this all belongs to the biodiversity. Now let's see the factors that affect natural vegetation. So the factor that affect the natural vegetation are the first is relief. Under relief we are having land and soil. Now how land affect the natural vegetation and how the soil is going to affect the natural vegetation let's see. The highlands and the lowlands that is nothing but the mountainic and the plain areas. The highlands and the lowlands are taken into consideration which affects the vegetation because in highland you find more soil erosion and less fertility than compared to the lowlands. So even land plays a very important role in the natural vegetation. Next see the soil. How the soil plays a very important role in the natural vegetation. So different types of soil provide different types of vegetation. Like in sandy soil we find cactus and in thorny bushes, isn't it? And whereas in a wet and mashy soil, we pro uh, it provides us the, like mangroves, big root plants. So even the soil provides us a different type of vegetation. We will see it later in the coming chapter that how the different type of uh, soil helps in growing the different type of trees. So even if here the soil affects the natural vegetation. Now the second is the climate. Again, the climate is subdivided into temperature, photo period and precipitation. Now, how temperature plays an important role in the natural vegetation? See, the character and the extent of the vegetation are mainly determined by the temperature. Along with its humidity in the air, precipitation and the soil, all these three factors determine the natural vegetation in that region. So, on the slopes of the Himalayas, that is at the hills of uh, the Himalayas and if we see the uh, plains region there is a lot of difference in the vegetation in the on the above height of 915 meters the fall in the temperature affect the type of a vegetation which is grown there then in the uh, peninsular plateaus where the plain areas are there there is a lot of difference in the vegetation if you go to the Himalayas you will find completely different vegetation if you come down to the plain areas you will find a different vegetation why because of the change in the temperature so even the temperature plays a very important role in the growth of the natural vegetation then comes the photo period photo period is nothing but sunlight so the variation in the duration of the sunlight at different places. There are the variation in the different places of the sun. Sometimes it is very uh, high rays. Sometimes it is very less rays in the region. Like uh, compared to the southern side to the northern side. If you see there is a lot of du uh, duration changes in the sunlight. So due to this difference. Why this difference is there? Due to the differences in the uh, latitude, altitude, the season and the duration of the day. So due to the longer duration of the sunlight, trees grow faster in summer than compared to the uh, this uh, June and September where you don't have that much of sunlight. So the photo period even plays a very important role while growing 
the natural vegetation then the next is precipitation in india almost the entire rainfall is brought in by the advancing southernmost monsoon that is when it is come during the period of june to september and retreating to the north monsoon areas of a heavy rainfall and they have more dense vegetation as compared to the other areas of the less rainfall why because this uh, you will learn this in the climate chapter in your geography you are having one climate chapter you will learn this how the monsoon comes the monsoon is coming from the southern side and when they reaches up towards the northern monsoon there the natural vegetation then compared to the southern side is completely different because by that time it uh, takes up much of the moisture and it rains heavily uh, towards the northern side the area then compared to the southern side that is the reason why we have in the northern side a very dense vegetation then compared to the southern side and the third is ecosystem all the plants and animals in an area are interdependent and interrelated to each other in the physical environment forming an ecosystem human being also an internal part of the ecosystem even they are interdependent on this ecosystem even we want these plants and animals the flora and fauna without this we cannot imagine our life so even the human beings are the part of this internal part of this ecosystem so with this diagram you can understand that how we are completely internally interdependent on each other let's see the importance of forest forest are renewable resources and it enhances the quality of the environment they modify the climate and controls the soil erosion and they regulate the stream flow that is the wind flow they support the industries with wood and many other agro based industries and forest based industries it controls temperature rainfall and wind forces it provides humus that is the dead leaves in the plants to the soil and shelter to the wildlife now let's see the types of vegetation the following are the major types of vegetation that can be identified in our country they are the tropical evergreen forest tropical deciduous forest tropical thorn forest and shrub forest mountain forest mangrove forest so these are the five types of vegetation that are found in india now just have a close look and find it out that what kind of a vegetation is found in india so with this map you will understand according to the temperature this uh, climate soil and land how the vegetation is differing so here see the dark green color in on the map shows the rain forest then just in the middle if you see this uh, the peninsula region if you will see this you will find the tropical deciduous forest and just above that green color that is near the jammu and kashmir you are going to found the man mountain forest because it is a mountainic region it, it is called as mountain forest and see here near this bangladesh a small here you find the highest rainfall and here you are going to find out the mangrove forest and the remaining the yellow one is the tropical thorn forest here you will just find the bushes it's a tropical thorn forest the yellow part area so this is how the vegetation has been divided in indian parts as per the climate precipitation photo period soil and land all the relief factor which have been affecting the natural vegetation according to that the vegetation has been distributed in india so let's see one by one what it is so le let us discuss in detail now let's see the first forest that is tropical evergreen forest and first look at the map and then we'll see what is tropical evergreen forest now near the western ghats if you see that green color and near the assam side if you see that green color and this green color is not visible over here it is here there even the lakshwadweep and the andaman and nicobar side so this is the area where we find the tropical evergreen forest wherever you find this type of a color which is there near the western ghat near the assam side this color a uh, green color is nothing but the tropical evergreen forest so let's see what is tropical evergreen forest tropical evergreen forest is also called as rain forest this forest requires heavy rainfall 
These are found near the Western Ghats and the island group of Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshwadeep and upper part of Tamil Nadu and Assam. They require 200 cm of rainfall. And the trees that reach the great height of 60 meters and above, the trees which grows over here that can reach to the height of 60 meters and even above. These forests have very rich vegetation of all the kinds of trees like shrubs, creepers, which gives us multi-layered. Since this region is warm and wet throughout the year, these are the evergreen throughout the year. That is the reason why it is called as evergreen forest. And commercially important trees of these forests are ebony, mahogany, rubber, rosewood, etc. And the con common animal that are found over here are elephant, monkey, deer, lemur, that is type of monkey, snail, scorpion, bats and many type of birds etc. are found over here. Now the next is the tropical deciduous forest. Now see the tropical deciduous forest. First see the map. See in middle of this Indian map that is the peninsular uh, region if you see where you find the plateaus the green color which is have the more of the color is there see that is the deciduous forest which is covering this uh, Madhya Pradesh Andhra Pradesh this uh, area so this is this is tropical deciduous forest in the middle so now let's see what is tropical deciduous forest this tropical deciduous forest are also called as the monsoon forest they are widespread forest in India. See if you can see that this is the most widespread one then compared to the other forest. And they receive the rainfall of around 200 to 70 centimeter. Trees shed their leaves during the dry season. When there is a pajar, they uh, shed their leaves in the dry seasons. And on the basis of the availability of the water, these forests are divided into two. That is the moist deciduous forest and dry deciduous forest. So let's see what is moist deciduous forest. It is found in the area receiving the rainfall between 200 to 100 centimeter. These are found in the eastern and the northern eastern part of the states and the foothills of Himalayas and Jharkhand. West Orissa and Chhattisgarh and the eastern slope of Western Ghat. When I'm speaking, you just go through with the map too. Trees that are found here are like teak, bamboo, shisham, sandal and kusum and so on. Now what is dry deciduous forest? These are found in the areas where the rainfall is around 170 centimeter. And they are present in the peninsular plateau and plains of Bihar and UP. Trees that are found here are teak, people, neem and sal. Large part of this forest was cleared for cultivation and some part are used for grazing. Animals that are found over here are lion, tiger, pig, deer, tortoise, elephant, birds, snakes etc. Now the next day is the thorn forest or a scrubs. Now if you see the yellow part in the map, this yellow part wherever you find on the Indian map, this is the thorn forest. So now let's see what is thorn forest now. Thorn forest are also called as the desert forest or a semi-desert forest. These type of forest are found in the area where the rainfall is less than 70 cm. Mostly thorny bushes, bubble, etc. are grown over here. Trees have long roots penetrating deep into the soil to get moisture. The stems are scullant. Scullant is nothing but thorny to conserve water. Leaves are mostly thick and small to minimize evaporation. Animals that are found here are rats, mice, rabbits, wolf, tiger, lion, fox, wild horse and camels etc. So this is what about the thorn forest. Now the next is the mountain forest. Now again look at the map and see where the mountain forests are found. See near this uh, Jammu and Kashmir area. Then again here uh, at the end of the Nepal you are having a green color. 
the green color which you are having near the jammu and kashmir and the edna of the nepal here this is a region where we find the montain forest now let's see what is montain forest now now the montain forest these are also called as mountain forest here we find the evergreen forest and very wet temperature trees grow here up to the height of 1000 to 2000 cm and now montane forest is also called as mountain forest here we find the evergreen forest and wet temperature trees grow up to the height of 1000 to 2000 meter with the broad leaves like oaks and chestnut and if we go uh, see the down diagram between 1500 to 3000 meter if we are going from between 1500 to 3000 meter the trees that are grown here are coniferous forest like pine spruce silver deodar etc and more height if we go uh, if we move then we will find the temperate grassland if we are moving more up then we will find the temperate grass grassland then again if we move above 3600 meter of the height that is above the sea level we will find pines birches silver fir junipers etc then if we go near the snow we find shrubs scrubs which are used by nomads for grazing at more higher we find mosses lichens are found over there then the animal that are found here are kashmir stag deer sheep jack antelope snow leopard yak bear panda goats of thick hairs uh, this kind of an animal that are found over here now the next is mangrove forest now what are this mangrove forest before that you should know where the mangrove forest are found so you see the map and see the red circle these are the regions where you find the mangrove forest so now let's see what is mangrove forest mangrove forest are also called as the tidal forest these forest are found in the area of coast influenced by the tides where mud and silts get accumulated due to the tides all the mud which are washed out they just stand in this area so all the slit it is a completely a mashy area so the dense mangrove are the common varieties with the roots of the plants submerged under the water here you if you see the background uh, image you can see that how the roots of the plants are submerged in the water so this is this kind of a trees are found in the mangrove forest where the roots are submerged inside the water they are found in the deltas of ganga mahanadi krishna godavari and kaveri in ganga we find the sundari trees that provide us hard timber then we also find coconut kiora any other trees and the animal that are found over here are the bengal tiger turtles crocodiles snakes etc so these are the four uh, these are the animal that are found in the forest and this kind of a trees it is very dense mangrove we find the dense one and it is also called as a tidal forest now let's see the wildlife of india india is also rich in fauna it has approximately 90000 animal species and 2000 species of birds which constitute 13% of the world total and there are around 2546 species of fish which accounts nearly 12% of the world stock not only this it has around 5 to 8% of the world amphibians reptiles and mammals the elephants are the most majestic animal among the mammals they are found in the hot wet forest of assam karnataka and kerala one horned rhino are also the other animal which live in swampy marshy lands of assam and west bengal arid areas like run of kutch and the thar deserts are the habitat of wild ass camel respectively indian bison nilgai and chosinga are the gaze and the gazel and different species of deer are some other animal that are found in india india is the only country in the world which has both the tigers and the lion the natural habitat of indian lion is gir forest in gujarat 
Tigers are found in the forest of Madhya Pradesh, Sundarbans of West Bengal and the Himalayan region. Ladakh is a freezing high altitude and these are the homes for the yak, shaggy and horned wild ox. And their weight is around 1 ton. And we also find the Tibetan antelope over here, blue sheep, wild sheep and the Tibetan wild ass. Birds life in India is colorful like we find over here peacock, peasants, ducks, cranes, pigeons and the other birds that are inhabiting the forest and the wetland of the country. Now let's see the major threats to the flora and fauna that are caused by the human being. Every species has an important role in the ecosystem. Hence the conservation of this flora and fauna is very essential. Excessive exploitation of the plants and animals by the human being had disturbed the ecosystem. About 13,000 plants are endangered and 20 species are extinct. That is nothing but completely vanished. Few animals are endangered and became extinct. Now how we are causing this threat to the flora and fauna? This is nothing but by hunting just for the commercial purpose. Pollution due to the chemical and industrial waste and cutting of the forest to bring the land under the cultivation. So we are rapidly cutting down the complete forest. We are just cutting down the forest just for the purpose of the cultivation. So these are the major threats that have been done by the human being to the flora and fauna. Now let us see what government has done or what steps the government has taken in order to protect the flora and fauna of the country. 14 biosphere reserves have been set up by the country to protect the flora and fauna. Four out of these are in the Sundarbans in the West Bengal, Nanda Devi in Uttarakhand and Gulf of Mannar in Tamil Nadu and Nilgiris in Kerala, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. These have been included in the World Network of Biosphere Reserves. Financial and technical assistance is provided to many botanical gardens by the government since 1992. Project Tiger, Project Rhino, Project Great Indian Bustards and many other eco-development projects have been introduced by the government. 89 national parks, 490 wildlife sanctuaries and zoological gardens have been set up to take care of this natural heritage. So with this we have finished our chapter and these are some of the important questions and with the help of this PPT you can answer these questions. So please try to answer all the questions in your registers.